Castlers, a Roblox developer who was incredibly respected by the role of community for his skill in FPS games. He was known to have one of the greatest reaction times out of any Roblox player and won countless tournaments, letting him gain over 100k subscribers. Castlers was considered a legend in the community, but was this really the case? Well, this individual's past comes along with scams, manipulation, and malicious attempts to break the Roblox TOS. This is the dark history of Castlers. May 15th, 2019, Castlers becomes a developer by framing a role of intern known as Aaron Frost. For context, Aaron was a friend he had met at Applebee's and they were both staff members for Rolf. They were really good friends and both very experienced in coding. Aaron states in one of his podcasts that he was usually busy, so he gave Castlers his account to help develop while he was gone. Me and Castlers go back a, a while. I mean, initially I was demoted from Rolf because I let him actually use my account when I was not able to use it because I wanted to get work done and he offered to get work done and I said, yeah, you know, you can use my account when I'm not online so that you can actually work towards, you know, making CB better and that's what I got demoted for and then he got promoted. After getting into the account, Castlers steals his work, claiming it as his own. He then lies to Mighty Baseblade, stating that it was actually Aaron who plagiarized his work. So as a result, Aaron was demoted and Castlers was hired as a developer. Now being a part of Rolf, he would start off working on the game Counterblocks, also known as CB, which is essentially the Roblox version of CSGO. He would also join a friend group called Team Cringe. Team Cringe was a group of Counterblocks players who were all in some way affiliated with Rolf. The roster included Castlers, Xenu, Aimer, and Trent, all of whom were developers or moderators for Counterblocks. Their team was known to have the best players in the game, with the best player on their team being none other than Castlers himself. Team Cringe participated in tournaments organized by a Discord server known as RSL Pro League, and they were essentially undefeated. But what if I told you that all of them were frauds? For starters, almost everyone on their team was a cheater or had it cheated in the past. Now obviously there were a few that were legitimately good, but the wide majority of these people were in fact exploiters. There have been countless clips of them cheating, including a video of one of their members known as Trent cheating for fun in a counterblocks game, and even getting away with it simply because they were friends with castlers. Randomly spam that wall. Try you literally yes. Now let's move on to the summer of 2019, when players in CB started to get better, which led to Team Cringe getting closer matches with their opponents. Castlers obviously didn't like this and would start finding all sorts of ways to make sure that his team didn't lose. One example of this is falsely banning their best player. Oh, I just wiped them all out very quickly, Daniel, if I say so myself. Another example of Castlers rigging matches is this clip of someone getting teleported outside the map in the semi-finals of an RSL tournament. Castlers claimed it was a bug in the game, but this was later revealed to be false. His friend Punable decides to ask him about the bug, and Castlers basically admits to everything. Castlers mentions in Punable's DMs that he was the boss, so he could pretty much get away with anything and said that it would have mattered if he was caught doing it or not. Now Glestic you may be asking, 
How did he get away with all of this? Wouldn't anyone else on Roll take notice? Well, bear in mind that most developers were working on the game Arsenal, pretty much neglecting CB. This was actually the main reason why Castlers managed to get away with all of this. The only person who was really above him in power was Mighty Baseplate, who was barely active and unaware of what was going on in the community. This technically made Castlers the owner of CB. Now, everything I've mentioned so far is just the beginning, because this is when things get interesting. In the fall of 2019, Castlers created a private Discord server in the hopes of starting a black market made specifically for selling in-game items. This is a process known as alt trading. For reference, alt trading means trading in-game items or accessories for any currencies outside of the Roblox platform. Not only is this against the Roblox terms of service, but it's also one of the easiest ways to get scammed. Now before this scandal took place, Rolf had already made a rule stating that anyone who was caught alt trading would get permanently banned from CB. So Castlers had to hide this scheme from most of the developers to make sure that he wasn't risking his job. So in order to do this, he tried remaining anonymous through most of these trades. Instead, he'd make his friend Aimer handle the trades directly, and whatever amount was made would be split in half with Castlers. Aimer refers to Castlers as his helper as an attempt to keep his identity a secret. We know this because the skins Aimer was going to sell in this screenshot were the same ones in Castlers' inventory. This was even confirmed by Aaron himself, who was a good friend of Castlers. So essentially, Castlers would spawn the skins and Aimer sold them to the buyers, with most items costing around $100 to $200. This scheme went on for a while until Mighty Baseplate would start to notice that Aimer had a lot of suspicious trades, which by the way are trades in which someone is giving away rare items in exchange for nothing. So Mighty would conclude that he was alt trading and Aimer would be demoted. Now that Mighty was focusing more on counter blocks, it would be much harder to continue these trades. So this is the beginning of their new plan, and that was to scam every person they were trading with. Now here is how the scam worked. Aimer offers a lot of items in exchange for a very hefty price. After the buyers make the payment, Castlers bans them for alt trading. Here is why the scam worked so well. The buyers think they were caught, since none of them were aware of Castlers' involvement. Mighty Baseplate, on the other hand, thinks that Castlers isn't involved either, since he was the one banning the alt traders. But obviously no plan is perfect, because there was one small problem. One buyer knew that Castlers was involved. This was Bazer. For context, Bazer was a known alt trader in the CB community. Now what sets him apart from the others is that he was the only one to trade directly with Castlers. Castlers obviously found Bazer as a threat, so he'd manipulate him into being his business partner, and when the time was right, Castlers would stab him on the back. Bazer was also their best shot at making money, since he bought more items than anyone else, giving thousands to Castlers and his friends. One day, one of Bazer's friends told him about the scam, and this led to him getting skeptical about his trades with Castlers. So as you'd expect, he told Castlers to give the skins first, given the amount of money he'd already sent him. Castlers responds by completely gaslighting him, saying that he had no intentions to scam. Rats, traitors, scammers, Castlers and almost all of his friends. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't scam you last time. I don't think anybody here is scamming Yeah, that, dude. you went first last time and it worked out for you, so why should I have to go first? Just pay. I'll give. Is easy. You went first last time and you got your stuff, so that's all I'm saying. So the payment went through, and a few days later, Castlers mentions to Bazer that the higher powers were forcing him to ban all all traders, and that anyone who wanted to be unbanned would have to pay money. But here's the fun part: three people were not affected by the ban wave, and that was Trent, Aimer, and Bless Rico who were all friends with Castlers and a part of Team Cringe. Bazer gets frustrated and accuses Castlers of being biased, 
and Kastler's responds by stating that everyone he accused of of not being banned were in fact banned. But this was revealed to be completely false, as his friends literally DM saying that they were not banned. A few hours later, Trent mentions to Bazer that he needed to pay $100 to prevent the ban. But this just turned out to be another scam, and his ban remained in place. Bazer demands a refund for the money he paid, but Amer states that Rolf doesn't do refunds and that Castler's already spent the money. So the following day, Castler's joins Bazer's game, banning him and the rest of the traders forever. With no refunds, Castler's gets away with over 10,000 USD, blocking all contact with these players. To cover up this scheme, Castlers deletes his DMs with Bazer and then makes a statement claiming that everything Bazer had screenshotted was inspect elemented, and then denies that the bans ever occurred in the first place. Scapter, on the other hand, deletes the logs of them alt trading to make it seem like it never even happened. Now, with all this drama in CB, Aaron would make a 30 minute podcast essentially talking about his awful experience at Team Cringe, giving his unbiased opinion. This video is linked in the description for those of you who want a deeper dive. Now here's something you probably don't know about Aaron. He owned RSL, which is the server Team Cringe competed in. So after the podcast was published, Castlers seized all role of connections towards RSL, and he and his Team Cringe members completely nuked the server, saying offensive slurs, even nuking a few content creators who spoke out on the situation. The guy who raided my Discord server numerous times with other role devs numerous times, then a bunch of inappropriate slurs. Mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh -uh. It's no surprise that most of the CB community started to lose respect for Castlers. So Castlers quit CB and started fresh in a brand new game. With most players being fairly new, nobody could stand in his path. This game was Roblox Arsenal, a game that was starting to skyrocket in popularity. Since his audience was fairly young, it was going to be much easier to manipulate them. Castlers would turn himself into a literal legend. He wanted to be the number one Arsenal player. In order to do this, Castlers used a cheat known as Triggerbot, specifically coded for him in the game. Triggerbot is an exploit which lets you automatically shoot when placing your crosser on an enemy. Setting this aside, he first started gaining popularity after developing one of the best game modes in the game, which was none other than competitive mode. Castlers was also a good friend of John Roblox and partook in many of his videos. John would state numerous times that Castlers was the number one player. With John being the biggest Arsenal YouTuber, many people took this statement as a fact, leading to Castlers gaining an insane amount of respect. His fame only grew as they'd played together in the ACT, which was a creator tournament hosted by Bandites and Wake. This was for 100k Robux and a special melee, easily making it the biggest event in the Arsenal community. When the tourney begun, Castlers took the aggressive approach, destroying all players in the tournament, eventually making it onto the finals where they would go against Tanker and Truth Behind the Lies. It was no competition though, because Castlers absolutely annihilated them, leading to the chat accusing him of extended hitboxes. This is because he actually has access to these hitboxes, confirmed in one of John's videos. And uh, by the way, you did not use mobile hitboxes on your tournament, right? Nope. Yep, uh, that was all legit by Castler. Same thing with me, I did not use mobile boxes at all whatsoever. I was I'm actually like, specifically told not to. I'm like, yeah, because, because uh, I one of the developers it. thought that I'd pull a funny and do that, because it would be really funny if I would have done that. Castlers claims he didn't use them in the tournament, but there's no way to confirm this because he never released his gameplay. This made a lot of the competitors skeptical, with Tanker being a great example. Tanker mentions in the description of his ACT video that he lost to a known trigger botter, 
leading to Truth's Discord announcement about Caster's legitimacy. This was due to a specific video on his channel where he played the game Aimstars. The video he posted was extremely suspicious, according to professionals such as Who is Aqua, who stated that Castlers was blatantly trigger botting in his Aimstars video. This is because of the slow hand movement, which was a bit odd for a person who has a very good reaction time. His clicks also seemed subconscious, making it quite odd to most aimers. These accusations eventually faded away and Castlers continued to grow in fame. But then the truth spilled out, one by one. A person named Ice, otherwise known as Light, would make a video exposing the misdemeanors that Castlers had committed behind the scenes. Now, as expected, the video resulted in major backlash, including an entire counter video made against it. There are pretty clear reasons for why this was the case. For starters, the evidence was presented in the worst way imaginable. Light throws out many screenshots with little to no context behind any of it. The screenshots could have also been easily faked, which obviously wasn't the case, but there wasn't really a way to know at the time. And the biggest factor of them all was the person's credibility. Light was a complete random in the eyes of the community, making him incredibly untrustworthy. Like you gotta think about it, I'm gonna assume this ice guy is a pretty good arsenal player but like how credible is this ice person like this ice person is obviously knowledgeable i know that but like i'm a pretty good arsenal player right i win extremely quickly like under three minutes and then people call me hacker why do they call me hacker because you know they're it's because they're not like as good at arsenal that's number one so they may not have as much experience and that could be the case here maybe ice isn't that good at arsenal maybe other players aren't as good at arsenal now, let's take a look at some of the main points people made against the video. The main defense for Castlers' legitimacy was the rumor that he was a CSGO pro. The truth is, Castlers was never a CSGO pro. This was even confirmed by Team Cringe themselves, stating that it was a lie created by a complete random. Now, it does seem like he played CSGO in the past, but anyone can play CSGO that doesn't necessarily make you good at it. Castlers even mentioned that he hadn't played CSGO five years prior to Counterblocks. It's also worth noting that this was in 2014, when CSGO's anti-cheat wasn't as advanced. The next reason people defended him was because they thought he pretended to cheat. If you're confused, this was a comparison to Tanker, who did something similar in the past. Something people missed out though, is that the only reason Tanker was able to fake the suspicious clips is because his videos were heavily edited. Castlers, on the other hand, only posted raw footage, making it impossible for him to fake any of the clips thrown against him. The final major claim in his defense is the reason stating that Castlers is legit because he's a developer. I do want to say though, I know some people have like, called Castlers out like, oh, that dude's a hacker or whatever. I know, especially like during my tournament or whatever. Um, but he is definitely not a hacker. He's a dev for the game. Why would he hack on a game that he literally works on every day? Castlers is definitely a legit dude. He's just that insane with his reflexes and stuff. This message that developers don't cheat was a bit strange, especially coming from creators like Bandites because it's actually the complete opposite. For starters, the developers are allowed to cheat on their own game. So what's stopping them from doing it? A great example of this is Scaptor, an Arsenal dev who actively cheated in the game and was the creator of Scap Assist. Roblox developers also have access to a code known as Lua, which can be used to make scripts or exploits. Taking these into account, it does make Castlers a bit more suspicious and makes you question his true credibility. Now let's take a look into why Castlers is an exploiter. For starters, a lot of things were off about his gameplay. He usually bot walked and his hand movements were fairly slow. Again, something unnatural for an FPS player who is claimed to be experienced. But most accusations focused more on his inhuman reaction time, shown in the following clips. I wish there was like a rocket launcher in this game. 
I'm holding it, man. Hold down. You're live, you know that's not really the only way you can play like that. No. Yeah. Fuck. 130 milliseconds? How about zero? Now, these are obviously very suspicious, but I believe that there is a better way to tell if he used Triggerbot. Because there is one key thing that this exploit does that is often looked over. This is a mechanic known as tap firing. Think in your head for a moment. Let's imagine that you are playing Arsenal and you get an automatic. Do you hold your mouse or do you spam click it? Obviously, you hold your mouse, even when your crosser gets a bit off the player, it just makes sense. However, this isn't the case with Triggerbot, because Triggerbot goes off clicks, and stops shooting the moment you take your crosser off the player, even by a few milliseconds, resulting in a tap fire. Looking back at Castler's videos, he does this subconsciously every single time. There are also times when Triggerbot can malfunction. A few notable scenarios include shooting after death and not shooting at all. The reason why the first scenario happens is because of respawn delay, which can confuse the Triggerbot into thinking that the enemy is still there when it's really not. The second one occurs as a result of meshes, which are invisible patches in the map set in place by the developers to avoid map glitching. Most meshes can be shot through, but that isn't the case with Triggerbot. Triggerbot confuses these meshes with actual walls, and fails to detect the enemy. We can see this in a specific clip where Castlers doesn't shoot the enemy until he goes through an invisible mesh. This clip is just one of many that exist within his channel. Let's take a look at the overwhelming amount of evidence. Now let's move on to Rolf's response to the allegations. Rolf has always been pretty quiet about the situation and have yet to put out an official response to the allegations. Here are some of their individual responses. Developer Midnight Crystal states, I am 99% sure that Castlers does an exploit and I said 99% because you can't be 100% sure about something, otherwise you might just be a fool. Lead developer Exone states that all evidence against Castlers had been thrown out of context, and that he was genuinely good at FPS games, with no evidence to back this up. I feel that most of these responses were assumptions, instead of facts. It seems pretty clear that most of the role team are clueless. A year passed and the allegations started to fade away, until Punable published a 28-page document known as the Rule of Chronicles. This eventually resulted in the making of another video on Castlers, uploaded by Very Water. This video also resulted in backlash, and all the comments were filled with anger and frustration. This was expected because after watching a few minutes of the video, it was pretty clear that Very Water had no clue what he was talking about, and the video was very misleading. Now here's the interesting part. Right after this video was published, all of the videos exposing Castlers were taken down. According to Bazer, Castlers falsely struck these videos down so he could cover up the truth. He copy he false copyright struck all of those videos down. It's really, really hard to find the evidence. That stuff is just lost media at this point. Two years later, 
All the videos on Castlers' channel were deleted, and his YouTube channel today stands as an abandoned wasteland. After all these years, Castlers is still yet to take accountability for any of his actions. From cheating his way to success, to stealing thousands of dollars from his closest friend, Castlers has one of the darkest histories out of any Roblox developer. And that, my friends, is the end of this video. Goodbye.